Wait, 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 where is it? There it is! You're in that plane right now! <laughs> Listen <Yay>! to Billy! <laughs> Okay, we're gonna go pick you up. <laughs> Let's go, bestie. <laughs> Hello, Omar. Oh my god! <laughs> what are you doing here? What are you doing here? What are you doing here? Are you doing here? <laughs> Yesterday, we were watching that scene with you and Faber, and the nurse comes in to like, Oh get my you. god! <laughs> you're like losing your shit, and you're like, Hi, I'm Sophia. We're gonna play Blast from the Past, and I'm gonna ask them questions and see, test their memory on season one, see what they remember. Which episode from season one was your favorite to film? <gasps> season one, probably interrogation. Because it's got to be the ball cap. No, I Oh, we're live. Should we play some music? I think it's been a long time. It's been a really long time. I don't. I feel like I don't even know how to go live what anymore. Was the last time we was on the boat. No, the last. <laughs> Was yeah, it was bad. That was bad. That was bad. That was really bad. That was really bad. And we swore we would never go live again. <laughs> Do you remember that? We did. We were like, never ever. Are we doing it? We literally said we're we never are. going live again. Seriously. But here we are. How are you, guys you asked my for ketchup it. and so mustard? Oh my god, we are. What? Someone said ketchup and mustard, but we are a chocolate. No, it's Shannon was here. If Shannon was here, the whole it's thing tonight, bite. and we'll post about it tomorrow. <laughs> but it's. <laughs> <laughs> Shannon was, was in red. red. I was in green, which looks different in every photo. I swear to God. And then you're in orange. Of course. Stop. Go slow. <laughs> I got off TikTok. I talked to you. Oh yeah. Because I lost my login, so, so I couldn't figure me it out. out. Erin can't log into her TikTok anymore, so I still sent her a hunt, which we have to do. Yeah, tonight. we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna tomorrow. revisit, but and we'll go through because I still said, even though I know you can't see them, I'm like, I I sent them to you because I know All we're gonna time. go through them again. You know I need glasses. Do you? Yeah. Did I tell you this? What's your like plus two point five? What's the mate? Mark? I have no idea. I got when I was like, younger. They were like, oh, you need glasses to wear for school, like in high school. When I was a kid, I was like, oh my god, yeah, I want glasses. Because you remember when you were a kid, you're yeah, like, yeah. It's like Bryce's glasses, yeah. like the whole vibe. They would like ask me, like, what do the letters say? And I'd be like, um, X, Y. Like, I would like <laughs> make it so I could get glasses. But then eventually they were like, oh no, you, no, like, you actually, you actually <laughs> need glasses. But I just have never worn them. But Long now, far, sometimes when vibe? I read, I'm like this. Hmm? Long far? What's. I think it's a bit of both. I'm not ready for the shorty angst. I'm gonna get in the life. I'm like. trying. <laughs> Not that. It's a bit like no, why? Well, no, two K twelve vibes. You know. Two what? Like this is real like two K twelve. <laughs> <laughs> it's that. like these ones. Yeah, it's really. Do you remember ones. that? I do. No, it was like international the, diva. It's and then we started doing like these. And we were like. Yeah, real little. That's oh right. my god. I Mia, mean, how <laughs> could you forget about episode five, episode nine? I didn't forget oh, about yeah. it. Oh, yeah. No. That video was really cute, though. It was really cute. I didn't I didn't forget about it. Did you not? No, I forgot about it. But I didn't <laughs> forget about it. Like, I didn't forget about it. But, you know, for me, that scene was so just... That scene in itself. I know, I know. Like, I don't go, oh, my God, episode nine. No, like, I know what you mean. For me, that was just, like, its own special moment. Yeah. That wasn't even, like, to do with an episode or anything it what just felt like special and cute when i saw that video i was like the just missed it for a while oh i know it was so cute i know it's such a stressful day but i know so cute it was a stressful day it was a day. very stressful day <laughs> it was like, it way was. too stressful we didn't know what was going on we i know like, oh, i know but the best part was because we did didn't we do moments together didn't we do an interview together yeah, we okay. did. We had a, just you and me, which we'll 
Was I allowed to say that? I guess. It'll come out. Yeah. 100%. I think showing, I think showing any relationship on screen, especially same sex relationships is so important because it's so, it's so hard to find, especially lesbians. I feel like that's so hard to find and it's so important. I can't imagine there not being a show for someone like a, a queer kid to watch that they can feel like they can see themselves in and be like, okay, I can, I can, I'm not alone in this. Cause sometimes you can feel so alone when you're coming out or if you haven't come out yet, that feel, that's a really isolated feeling for a lot of people. So it's so important to have shows like this that um, celebrate that as well as normalize it. Yeah, I mean, may I just smash that answer? There's not really much. To <laughs> <laughs> um, I think we see, we definitely see Shelby um, the happiest we've ever seen her in season two. Um, you know, her and Tony are, are a union and it's a beautiful one. And it's um, something that Erin and I really enjoyed creating and being a part of. And, you know, we would always say every time we got to do scenes together, it was just like, Oh, breath of like a sigh of relief because we just knew each other so well and we, we were still getting to know these characters especially as they um evolve into these into this sort of connection this relationship um but it's been it's been a real thrill yeah and I'll say I mean for Tony she's the calmest that she's ever been throughout the whole season yeah as Mia said like we get to work with each other so often and um so intimately and I mean in a way that um because often oftentimes it's just us that we get to do scenes together so we get to work so closely that I find that there's almost so much of my characterization now is wrapped up in the relationship that we've created especially in this new um season because we've we've both changed so much and it's very far from the audition tapes that we put down like three <laughs> or four years ago you know so it's so yeah. cool growing with each other and our characters Ooh, main lesson. I'm going to say <laughs> maybe Tony learned to control her emotions and not let her emotions control her. I think she steps into the second season with a much more of a level head and um, maybe more of a path to go down. I think she was a little lost before and sort of swimming around in her own emotions. And now she's got a little guiding light. Hmm. I think Shelby learned to give in to her, her impulses, how she feels and how she wants to live her life. She really, you know, allows herself to, to have that space to, and freedom to be her, her authentic self. And I think that was something that was very hard for her to learn and is still a huge process even in season two it's it's a hard long process but le learning to kind of let go of that trying to control like every every single thing about her image and her lifestyle and like where she is in the world and I think we see her kind of let those guards down I guess and kind of fall into what she wants to do and that's it's an interesting and com complex journey for sure I mean what can we expect <laughs> Um, <laughs> I'm trying to think. Yeah. Well, we know that there are, they are, they've kind of fallen into each other. I think we, we've seen that they're sharing clothes. They're, um, <laughs> really, really, <laughs> um, <laughs> classic. Um, but they, um, yeah, you definitely see a union, a union there. And you know, you know that's, yeah. that's a connection that we all feel really, really deeply about. And you know, don't want to don't want to ignore that. It's something really special. You'd see them both learning how to love and how to be loved and accept that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, I'd bring Erin up. Wait, can't, can I was going to say you. <laughs> really? <laughs> For sure. Because in my head, I'd be like, we survived this on a TV show, babe. <laughs> 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 And like we've traveled together, like you know, yeah. we've like shared a tiny apartment for three months, like haven't yes. gotten sick of each other yet. It's like that's perfect. Yeah, we can do that. We actually can yeah. seriously we really good. <laughs>
Well, like I said, I've seen all of season two. I don't want you guys to get into too many spoilers, but I love that you guys have a real life friendship too. And I'm honestly curious, when actors have a real life friendship, does any of that kind of bleed naturally on screen? Like, are there any moments that your real life friendship kind of shows up on screen? Any scenes this season? Yes, I think all the time. Like, in all the time. I, do, I swear it's like there's like Samir and Eric sprinkled in there like um this episode, um Dot's birthday like we were just like like the mo like montage sort of stuff it was just basically me and Erin are just running amok holding hands <laughs> like, it was like just classic behavior I, I remember that. we came off the set once and we were talking and I was like oh my god am I doing enough work like I feel like I'm not putting in the work as an actor like oh I'm being lazy and then we're like well, no, because just like us having the relationship that we do, yeah, kind of, like do so much of the work for us because it's like the, we don't have to focus on connecting. Because I'm like, yeah. yeah. If you yourselves were stranded on a desert island, do you think you would survive? And what character would you take with you to help you? Ooh, character. Uh, what character would I take? Yes. What character would help you most? I mean, I'm taking Shelby for sure. I feel yeah. like. Not only just because I love her, but because, you know, you're like, I'm going to go find some water, you know, like you're getting out there. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Tony, of course. Of course, of Tony. Course. <laughs> Tony's kind of got that, like, um, toughness that I think I would need on the island. That sort of no bullshit sort of, like, um, suck it up sort of thing that I think I would need that energy um would I survive I'd give it a crack I'd give it but I don't I don't know if it'll if I'll last very long maybe definitely not as long as the girls have lasted so far on this island mm. also, yeah, also the island shall be with with Tony that is like a huge big love that one <laughs> <laughs> I know you love to like take a book and go to the beach and get the race. I also know you love to have a little schooner and a pop. There are so many things. Is that right? I was gonna say, oh yeah, four. I was gonna say, you, me, friends, glass of wine, and the Period. friends jumpers. <laughs> That's it. That's it. That's, That's it. it. That's the one. Because we used to hang out, and I was like, life is perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Do this forever and I would be happy. Oh, so many. I mean, she's an incredible singer. She's an oh. incredible singer. I'm sorry if I've not, I can, I can do another one if you like. Oh, a special talent. Oh. I did it on live with you, remember? A while ago. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm just throwing you I was gonna say now. your ability to light up a room. Oh, so true, bestie. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, remember I was on live and I was like, did that tongue thing? And they were like, Oh, what? yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that needs to die. That needs to be like that. <laughs> you have? I've said it in a Wilds interview. Oh, 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 oh. We were there together. We were playing Twister. Twister. Oh, yeah. Well, give me a clue, give me a clue. It was fun. Um, he's on Friends at some point. Paul Rudd! Yeah! yeah. <laughs> oh, I mean, guilty pleasure. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm like, um, oh, guilty pleasure. I mean, friends in a glass. Oh, oh yeah. Red. That's a, oh, that's yeah. a big yeah. one. Yeah. So true, bestie. You that is my guilty pleasure. Yeah. That's I love like, a VB. Pistachios. <laughs> so true, bestie. All so of true, bestie. Very, pistachios, VB, friends. <laughs> and Dried one. mango. Dried mango. You listen to a lot of like techno, and I have to admit, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what their names are. But every yeah. time we're in the in the car going to set, it's like you know four in the morning. I'm listening to like 
like sometimes <laughs> friends, but like something very peaceful. And just I can hear it sounds like Skrillex or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, that's just so true, Bestie. I can always hear you're listening to like Edda James, and I'm over here. At yes. The yeah. in the car. Like, so that's so true. <laughs> People with an open heart and a lot of love to give and good energy. She loves positive, amazing energy. That is your type. So true, Bestie. We are here to read our first tweets for BuzzFeed. Number one, I want someone to look at me the way Shelby looks at Tony. <laughs> oh, I'm so <laughs> It's so cute. Sometimes I turn around and you're just like, I know. There was one scene in season two when you were like, oh, look at that face. And it's like literally like, wow. Like, yeah, I know. Really I believe in Tony and Shelby supremacy exactly ship Shoney for glam skin. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag the wife. That is so cute. Tony and Shelby, yeah, I will pass out. They're both so hot. I'm at my limit, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my days. <laughs> Gosh, I'm like blushing. <laughs> the scene where Shelby kisses Tony, and then I don't even know how to pronounce this because you just, it's like the gibberish that you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I always write that. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> I don't even. It went from a heat <laughs> argument to a mind blowing kiss. Wow, that was hot and intense. Keeping yeah. the best in bed. <laughs> <laughs> Doing good work out here. <laughs> God's work in the forest. You know, just before the cliff kiss where Tony melts into Shelby's hand, dot, dot, dot. Gay excellence. We're just like... Mm. Shelby's always holding Tony's face. Have you noticed that? Yeah, it's like always like... It's, yeah. You just really are holding on so tight. It's adorable. Oh my gosh, I die. Shelby really fell in love with Tony at first sight and found every possible way to touch her on that first day. That is so true. If you think about it, if you watch back to the first episode of season one, did you realize that like, she was like, all right, when she's trying to get everyone to like move around on the plane to like yeah. sit, go straight up to Tony. And she's like, oh, putting her hands on her shoulders. Like, come yeah. on. <laughs> What's interesting though, is that we didn't even know in this in that episode that Shelby was even closeted. So that was just yeah. lucky. Oh my God, no, not this. <laughs> so it's quote, F you, my child is completely fine. End quote. Your child thinks bald Shelby is kind of hot. <laughs> I'm gonna be feeling myself about this like two seconds ago. I know. <laughs> I'm like Tony. the energy and now it's like... <laughs> Edna's voice as Tony is hot as hell and then she goes and imitates Shelby and I fall even more in love. Send the help. <laughs> when you're in the bunker? And, yeah, I say like, oh, it'll just mix it up more that way. Oh, I don't know. But <laughs> oh, I love that little moment. <laughs> so cute. And I remember when I shot that, I was like, because this is before our journey together, yeah. I played like mad and then they were like, just try it for a taste. Try it like yeah. you're thinking back badly. And I was like, okay. Easter egg. <laughs> the way Tony did a full 180 turn from an angry lesbian into a soft teenage mess once Shelby kissed her. It Horrible. really was a full 180. <laughs> she the script so quick. <laughs> she threw out the script. <laughs> she threw it out. <laughs> I just know Shoney's going to be so fing gay next season. Like I know for a fact that Mia and Erin are won't let us down. They're definitely gonna give us some cute little background moments and shit. it's gonna be so fucking cute and adorable. Period. I put with that. And I hope that you're not disappointed. Yeah, I hope you guys are disappointed too. Now, uh, for you as actors, uh, what lessons do you feel you took from season one into season two? Hmm. Hmm. I think the importance of um, your off-screen relationships and how it informs your on-screen ones and just like how lucky Mia and I are being able to tell these stories together and I think like it's going to be so hard making other things because I'm like I, the, you've got to you've got to do so much work to, to, to well, not even with you I don't have to do any work to build the relationship that we have but you know like it's um it's so important and that's what helps with the storytelling and, and, and hopefully what people see on screen and um, yeah, that's Absolutely. the lesson. I got to do the work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I would have to say the same that, that, um, that dialogue um, with your scene partner in any 
way is really important. And it's just so amazing that Erin and I have a really great friendship. So we've been able to have really, really open dialogues about our characters and what they're going through. And it's, you know, it connects us as friends and people. And it also at the same time connects our characters together. So that's something that um, I'll never forget to do is have those open conversations because it helps me. I think, I feel like I need to say it out loud and think about it and talk about it and see it, like hear from other people. Cause sometimes I feel like it's quite easy to get wrapped up in what's going on in Shelby's mind and Shelby's world and Shelby and like, if, if, not in like a selfish way, but just, you get so wrapped up in your character and want to do them justice that you forget to look outside of that and think about what your partners are going, your scene partners are going through and especially now in season two that these two characters are partners um you know those that's important to know how they're feeling absolutely shoni means a lot to me i really truly um feel very connected to these characters to this to this relationship so it's been such a such an honor to to kind of try and give these characters justice um and to make sure that people who are watching from home can feel like they're not alone. Cause that's, that's the one thing that I just hope that people can take away from this show, whether it be after season one or two or whatever, I, is if they feel like they are not alone by something that we've created, mm. that just gives me such like, I can sleep at night. It is just an honor, as Mia said, and just allowing people to feel seen and heard by the stories that we tell and the ones, the stories that we feel so connected to and um, so passionate about telling. Yeah, it means a lot. The journey that you see, um, if I'm talking about Tony in particular, through season one is so, I mean, yeah, it's really, she really does transform into a different person than, than who we meet. And I think, again, meeting her in season two, it's, she's found a lot of peace and isn't letting her emotions control her as much anymore. And that's really beautiful and it's really special. And then the new challenges that arise for her um, and the growth that, Shoni <laughs> has and the lessons <laughs> that they have to learn with each other is so special and I think it's amazing now for season two I could just say having my journey guided by Shelby's journey and Mia's journey and having that be something that we kind of ride together has been so special and whilst obviously we have our own personal things going on being able to navigate that all together is really beautiful couldn't agree more on that one we definitely see Shelby at her happiest that we as that we've seen her in season two which was so nice to film. Um, it's interesting, you know, Shelby, she carries around a lot of shame and guilt around who she is and tries to control everything that's happening inside her externally and internally, but she really tries to control everything. So we do see her let go of, of that control, but it's, it's interesting how um, shame and guilt seems to follow her. But um, I, can't stress enough how beautiful it is to see Shelby and Tony together um, and just giving into that. It was so, yeah, I can't wait for everyone to see it. And Mia, how about you? How about with um, Shelby? I want Shoni to be Endgame. I'm like the biggest fan of that, you know? So I, I want to see that be the the end goal at the end of this so and I, and I hope that it will but um yeah kind of similar to what Erin said you know these these two characters have so much going on in their lives and you know speaking for Shelby she's got so much that she needs to figure out for in order to be the best version of herself and also to be the best partner she could possibly be to Tony you know there is so much work and effort that goes into um yourself in order to be a good partner and I think that's something that shouldn't be overlooked Tony deserves to be with someone who is going to be able to support them through everything and it just is important mm -hmm. that both, like these people get to explore themselves figure out what they need to do in order to be the best partner best person and we'll go from there that means a lot to me and to be able to do that with my best friend and oh. you know create these characters together it's just been a dream come true I can't imagine life getting any better than this truly <laughs> i want you to tell me about your best birthday when i turned 21 and we were shooting the wild season one and we went to waiheke island and went to beautiful wineries and it was the most perfect weather it was perfect beautiful yeah. so amazing that actually was one of my favorite birthdays it wasn't my birthday but it was, that was like <laughs> but yeah um i think one of my favorite birthdays is probably um recently my 20 third <laughs> i'm counting now my 23rd when erina and i went to 
um, Hayman Island. That's it, right? Hamilton Island? Hamilton. Hamilton, Hamilton yeah. Island. Right, Hamilton Island had like a helicopter over the beach. Erin organized this whole thing. It's like this birthday surprise. It was very romantic and very luxurious. And I'd never done anything like that before. So it was just lots of laughs. It was, yeah, funny as. That sounds absolutely lovely. For the first one I wanted to focus on was the I love you moment, because like, I feel like we do see many, you know, I guess I have to say cliche representations of the someone says it and then someone doesn't moment. But this to me feels so true to these two characters and their mm -hmm. experience. So I guess first for you, Mia, what was kind of, you know, the driving force that made you playing that moment feel like that was the right time for her to, I guess, in a sense, let it slip? Yeah. So I think, you know, we, this at the beginning of season two, we see Shelby as the happiest we've ever seen her. And in that scene, specifically that scene, and the reason why she felt like she needed to say it in that moment was because it was this beautiful, like kind of juvenile um, day. They were having just chasing each other and kissing and laughing and it felt so pure. And I think that is the closest to heaven that Shelby has ever felt and been. So I think that was the perfect moment for her to kind of come out with that. Um, but yeah my damn heart all right so yeah. i want to toss it to you because like tony's reaction again it's like i feel like usually we get moments like that where someone just like flat out doesn't say it but it's not quite like that it feels like she does receive it honestly she just doesn't say it back so yeah. what what was it like i guess crafting that reaction in a way that felt right and true to her i mean it was just so it's so heartbreaking i think in terms of crafting it like these two are just sort of thrown into this journey and they're just like loving being together. And then I feel like this really catches her off guard. And then sort of the, the trigger comes back for her around that word love. And um, it was so heartbreaking going on that journey with her of not feeling deserving of love, but also so rewarding for me as an actor, being able to bring, find a way to get Tony into a place where she does feel deserving of Shelby's love. And that is, it made it all the more rewarding. It's been quite nice seeing how Tony and Shelby was never really like brought up, which I really, really appreciate. You know, like the, every, all the other girls on the island were just like, cool. And we didn't even talk about it. And then we were just lovebirds. We just like share a bed now. Share a bed now <laughs> and everyone accepts it. And, and that's really wonderful and comforting. And I, I love when that happens. So that was really cool to see. But with Martha... Yeah, that was sort of the only time that it sort of had to be outlined, I suppose, because yeah. she's my person. A little apprehensive to let her know. And, I mean, there was definitely the potential for it to rock the boat a little bit, maybe. But um, Martha's just a little legend about it. She is just a little legend. She's just she? like, as long as you're happy, I'm happy. And I'm like, oh. I so know. that's really beautiful. Tony is... Yeah, I sort of have like kind of like a bit of an analogy for her that like we talk about machine gun Tony. She's like -da 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 -da, yeah. the way she talks and she doesn't think and she acts impulsively and aggressively and, you know, destructively. But I do admire it in her and through her relationship and the trust that she's built with Shelby, she just like puts it to the side and puts it down. It's still there and it's still hers and she'll still have the ability to like rah, mm. let rip because it's kind of who she is. But um, she sort of allows herself to take away that defense mechanism and open herself up and it becomes a lot calmer as you see at the end of season one. And then in season two, that sort of trust that she has in Shelby just like goes even further. In some moments, not that I think it's wrong, but like blind trust in you and you are go dealing with a lot of things and maybe are less secure in us in moments because mm. of other things that you're going through. She's just like blindly and wholeheartedly following Shelby through it, which is um, a big change. You know, you're really trying to put me in pants sleeves and a high sock. I think the thing with Shelby is she's a bad bitch. She really is. <laughs> she really she's is. like, at, by the end of season two, you're like, oh my God, this woman just gets throws herself yeah, or, you do like throw yourself she everything. throws herself into like so much shit i feel like shelby is a phoenix that's rising from the ashes but doesn't know how to use her wings yet she can't fly free yet because she doesn't know how to do it she's just constantly oh. blossoming and then burning and blossoming oh and burning God. We've all seen how she's changed in season one. She went from very, I guess, uptight. Is that is that 
I mean, we didn't see it first season, but when we rewatched it last night, I was like, oh, yeah. She's quite highly strong. Yeah. yeah, she's, you know, closeted. She's ashamed. And you see her sort of free herself from those shackles and experience as part of herself that makes her happy and that's at her core. Now that she's got something so good, she'll do anything to make sure that she doesn't let that go. For example, in season one, she found something so good with the church and with the respect of her family, and then she did everything to keep that safe. And I think that's what she's doing now in season two with Tony. She's found this thing that is even more important to her and makes her incredibly happy. And so she wants to keep that safe, but sometimes it can be really mm. destructive, the ways in which that she tries to preserve that. I'm not going anywhere.